Hello there my RPG lovers and welcome to another video. 2023 is already a very busy year for my channel. I started making these videos where I go back and play a lot of obscure and forgotten RPGs and action adventures, which take a lot of my free time. You're a smart guy! Besides that, I'm trying to keep up with my long retrospective videos, as well as some spontaneous content that you can see on the channel. But this video is about 5 specific games I plan to revisit this year. Not necessarily to make content about them, although that might happen if I feel like it and if I have a good idea for the video. Long story short, these are the games I plan to play more casually when I have some extra free time on my hands. I'm also going to give you some reasons why I chose these games in particular, and maybe you get an itch to play some of these games as well. Alright, alright, none of my business. C can, I, uh, can I go now? This is going to be a more casual video than usual, and I plan to do this more often in the future. But before we continue, let me tell you about the sponsor of this video. Gemstone Legends is an epic RPG match 3 game with tactical battles and many adventures. It's a game made by RPG enthusiasts, and they combined many different genres into one game. Gemstone Legends is highly rated on Android and iOS stores, and you can get the game for free by using my link in the description or the QR codes. You'll get an amazing starter pack with awesome rewards. Gemstone Legends has puzzle-style elements, as well as hero collecting feature with more than 200 heroes. These heroes have 8 different factions, along with 5 different tiers. Every hero has unique skills, which can be a game changer in each battle. If that's not enough, you can bring a dragon ally to the battle. Now, how cool is that? Gather clans of heroes and fight in PvP mode with other dragon riders to compete in guild wars. You can be up to date by joining the official Discord channel, fight with your teammates against different bosses and win more rewards. Download the game for free on both Android and iOS stores and find me under the nickname C4G. Use the link in the description or scan the QR code and you'll get a free epic hero along with some juicy rewards you see on the screen. Number 5. Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlords. Mountain Blade Bannerlord came out in Early Access in 2020 and it was the best Early Access game that I ever played. Back then it was definitely not feature complete and it had some balancing issues but it was totally playable. I spent around 60 hours on the game and I did a review along with a couple of more videos because I really like Mountain Blades. If you want you can check those videos out, especially the one for the combat tips which can help you a lot if you plan to get this game. Back in the day, I spent countless of hours on Warband as well as Napoleonic Wars, which was a very fun PvP spin-off game. I used to work in a local TV station and I remember playing Warband a lot during my shifts. What a fun job, right? So yeah, I have a rich history with this franchise. I started a new game on stream recently and ever since then I've been thinking about completing it. Now would be a great time to start playing the game again because it recently got fully released, it's no longer in early access. If you ask me, Mountain Blade has one of the best formulas for a third-person action combat, even though it's very simplistic in its core. That's actually the beauty of it, it's functional, it makes sense, it's amazing in huge battles against hundreds of enemies, and it's simple and fun. Combined with all the strategy features, you can easily lose hundreds of hours into this game. I mean, what else can you ask for? Less talking, more raiding! Before I started playing the first Mountain Blade game, I never thought it was possible to combine strategy and action genres in this way. This is truly a unique experience that only Mountain Blade games can offer you, and it's not a very hard game to get into. I think that was one of the reasons why this franchise managed to build such a cult following ever since the first game. Speaking about the following, Mountain Blade games always had an impressive modding community. Bannerlord is no different, and it seems like it already has some very high quality mods to try out. I'm also thinking about getting this game on PS5 as well, just because I love it so much. I will drink from your skull! Number 4. Ease Franchise I'm going to cheat a little bit here because this is not just about one game. First of all, if you watch my channel, you probably know that I don't cover any JRPGs. And the reason for that is very simple, eh, I don't play them. I'm just not a huge fan of turn-based combat, which seems like the default choice of gameplay for many JRPGs. I mean sure, I know some other JRPGs with action combat system, but these games rarely grab my attention. 
Now, I can't remember for certain how I discovered this franchise, but I know that E7 was the first Ease game I played. After that, I started trying out old and newer Ease games and I absolutely loved them. As you would assume, these games have an action combat system. An amazing action combat system actually, with very fun boss fights. The latest entry in this series would be East 9 Monstrum Nox. I played this game for a while, but I never finished it. By the way, if you're playing on PS5, you can get East 9 if you have PSN extra subscription. It works really well on the console. I recently started a new game, but I didn't get too far. The reason I stopped is because I wanted to complete some older East games first, especially Memories of Celseta, which I also bought for the PS5. I never actually played this game before, and it seems like it's not the fan favorite, even though it still has some very positive reviews. This is the last game in the series before they started making third-person Ease games. I love these games even more now, but I kinda miss the style of older Ease games, and Memories of Seseta has very pleasant visuals. There are some very rough-looking assets, but we have to remember that this was a PlayStation Vita game, which explains a lot. The story of Ease games is very decent as well. I mean, sure, it has some typical corny moments like every JRPG, but it's still pretty interesting. Is 8 in particular has a great little story with memorable characters. You play as Adol Christian and he's a very curious guy who likes adventuring. The story of these games is not exactly told in a chronological order, but it's still easy to follow. You can have up to 3 characters in your party and different enemies require you to switch between them in order to be the most effective in fights. Like I said before, the boss fights are very, very good, even in older Ease games. Ease 7 really took me by surprise when it comes to bosses, and they kept this tradition with each new game. So yeah, I highly recommend playing these games, especially if you love good action combats. You can start with E7 or maybe E8 if you prefer third-person perspective. Number 3. Assassin's Creed Odyssey I take pleasure in your When this game came out back in 2018, I remember that my PC was struggling to run it properly. Interestingly enough, the same thing happened when AC Valhalla came out, I had to buy a new GPU, which I'm still using by the way. I played AC Valhalla and AC Odyssey recently, but I didn't finish either of them because I had to focus on some other games and videos. Now, I know that a lot of fans of this franchise have a lot of issues with the last 3 Assassin's Creed games and I can definitely see why. Everything changed after AC Origins, it's not the same franchise anymore, that's for certain. That's probably very frustrating for a lot of older fans, it's understandable. But if you ask me, I think they changed for the better in many ways. I know that's not the most popular opinion out there, but the truth is, I was never a fan of older Assassin's Creed games. I always thought the gameplay is extremely mindless in those games, except the parkour. AC Odyssey is far from a perfect game, but I'm always having a lot of fun with the gameplay when I come back to it. I enjoy the main story quests and some side quests, but the most fun I'm having with the gameplay is just running around, attacking forts and improving my gear. It's a very systematic and checklist style of gameplay which Ubisoft became known for. That's not necessarily a bad thing, I enjoy it for what it is, even though it's not my preferable style of gameplay. The progression system has some issues and it starts feeling like a big numbers game, especially because of the level scaling. It can be tedious to constantly worry about upgrading the gear, but moment to moment gameplay can be really fun. I still think the ship combat was way better in Black Flag, but it's still pretty fun in AC Odyssey as well. In some ways, I like Valhalla's gameplay more, but it feels more stiff compared to AC Odyssey, especially when it comes to basic movement of the character. I think the main problem with newer games, and this might sound stupid, is the lack of soul. Even though I like these games for what they are, they feel a bit soulless and forced in many ways, if that makes sense. That being said, it seems like a lot of YouTubers have a hate boner for Valhalla, and I'm not going to judge other creators for trying to get clicks but some of those takes are just ridiculous. AC Origins, Odyssey and Valhalla definitely have issues and Ubisoft is not exactly a well-beloved company nowadays, but I'm able to find a lot of fun with these games. I mean, fun is highly subjective and that's why I try my best to critique all major features in games when I review them. But at the end of the day, only you'll know or feel when something is fun for whatever the reason. 
the microtransactions in these single player games are just stupid and I will never support that, let alone buy something from the store with real money. But it never felt like they got in the way while playing these games, so I just ignore them. Although I'm kinda of worried for the future, because Ubisoft is probably going to try and be more aggressive with the store. I hope not, but we'll see. The bottom line is, AC Odyssey has a very high replay value and a beautiful open world to explore on sea and lands. That, and all the stuff I said about the gameplay, really makes me want to play this game again, and I'll do it very soon. Number 2. Monster Hunter Rise Oh look, another anime style game on the list, even though I said I don't really like this style of games. <laughs> shut up. No, but seriously, I have a similar story for this game franchise as well. I'm always looking for a good action gameplay, and there are plenty of people who always start recommending Monster Hunter games. About 5 years ago, or maybe 4, I can't remember precisely, I started playing Monster Hunter Portable Thirds via emulation on PC. And a couple of years after that I actually got a PSP and played it on the original hardware as well. It took a while for the gameplay to click with me. <laughs> See what I did there? I'm a fucking loser. But after you learn how the basic mechanics work, it's very easy to start loving this game. The only problem is, learning those mechanics can be very difficult for a lot of people. And that's the main reason why the gameplay in Monster Hunter games is very beginner unfriendly. I would even go so far and say that Monster Hunter Rise has almost brought this third person action gameplay to perfection. I mean they've been doing it for almost 20 years, they kept the same formula and they just improved and added some new mechanics. I played Monster Hunter Rise on the release date on my Switch and somehow I managed to get the last physical copy in the store. There are two big reasons why I want to replay this game. Well, first of all, it's kinda stupid to say that you want to replay a Monster Hunter game, you just continue playing it. Sure, you can make a new character, but that's almost pointless because you can do everything with a single character. But anyway, there was a big expansion for the game called Sunbreak that I still haven't tried out. Sunbreak adds a lot more content and cool monsters to hunt, among other things. The second major reason why I want to play it again is because I only played it on Switch. This game has been released on PC for quite some time now and on PS5 recently. I really want to get it on PS5 and play this game on 4K resolution and 60fps. Don't get me wrong, I was totally okay with how it played on Switch, I didn't care that much about 30fps as long as the frame rate is consistent. But playing it again on the PS5 is almost going to feel like a different game. If you never played these games before and you may be intimidated by how hard the gameplay can be for beginners, I highly suggest watching some useful beginner guides on YouTube. And of course, I highly recommend playing Monster Hunter Rise if you value a great action combat system, amazing boss fights and very good progression. Wonderful work, my friend. Number 1. Immortals Phoenix Rising Oh, but what is this? Another Ubisoft game on the list? You took some of that sweet Ubisoft money, huh C4G? Eh? Eh? <laughs> yeah, I fucking wish. No, but seriously, when this game came out I gave it a very positive review and for a good reason. Now, when I think about it, this is probably the best Ubisoft game in recent years and it somehow went under the radar. I mean, it's not exactly underrated, a lot of people heard about it. But still, it feels like it got overlooked in a way. Maybe because it took so much from Breath of the Wild, but I don't see Genshin Impact having that problem. The same studio that worked on AC Odyssey worked on this game as well and it's very easy to tell that once you start playing it. I mean, if you played AC Odyssey that is. The combat is a simplified version of AC Odyssey combat with a couple of very similar mechanics. Just like in AC Odyssey, this game has an Asian Greece setting. This would be a second game with a similar setting from this team, but this time around there is a much bigger emphasis on the humor. Boring! Can we skip this part? And of course, it's more of a Greek mythology setting rather than standard ancient Greek setting. I usually find games who try to force humor a bit cringe, even when the jokes are good. 
but Phoenix Rising has pretty good writing and story with goofy but memorable characters. Well, these are some well-established characters from Greek mythology, but they act really goofy and there are some very interesting interactions between them. Sometimes the humor does feel a bit forced, but it's not a big deal. When it comes to the gameplay, think of Zelda Breath of the Wild with a couple of more extra features and Greek mythology. However, I mentioned in my review that if you don't like puzzles, you're not going to like this game. Even though I'm not a huge fan of puzzles in games, I found them to be very interesting in this game and reasonably challenging. This is probably the only game on the list for which I don't have another reason for wanting to replay it. I just feel like playing this game again because I had so much fun the first time. I might get it on PS5, although it works really good on my PC, so that could be just a waste of money I guess. Unless I get the physical version to add to my small collection of PS5 games. Anyway, I highly recommend checking this game out if you didn't already and check out my review along the way. And those will be 5 games I plan to replay in the near future. Oh and by the way, I'll leave some GOG links for these games. If you decide to buy some of them on GOG, you'll support my channel by using those links. Tell me your opinion about these games in the comments below. Do you plan to play some of them in the near future? Let me know. Big thanks to Gemstone Legends for sponsoring the video and check out those links in the description. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you enjoyed watching. If you want to go a step further, you can always become a Patreon or a YouTube member. Even the smallest support a month means a lot. Many thanks to all of my current supporters and I'll see you in the next one.